Joining us now, two renowned experts. Michael Mann, Presidential Distinguished Professor of Earth and Environmental Science at the University of Pennsylvania, the author of the new book, Our Fragile Moment, How Lessons from Earth's Past Can Help help us survive the climate crisis. Also with us is Raj Shah, the president of the Rockefeller Foundation and a former USAID administrator and author of his new book, Big Bets, How Large-Scale Change Really Happens. So, Raj, first to you. Talk about the conference. You were there in Dubai. How much could be achieved in something like this? Does this become sort of a glorified Davos with less, you know, scientific-based economic, you know, outcomes? Well, Andrea, thank you for having me. And I will say I did just come back from Dubai. And I think two things are true. The first is uh, the official negotiations, which are what the COP originally represented and still represents, are moving forward with incredible, uh, with a very incremental approach. And I think it's easy to look at that, to read Michael's book and to say those two things are a problem. We need bold, concerted global action. And what we're getting from global political leaders and in this case, a country that's hosting the COP that is, uh, has a long history of supporting the oil and gas industry, of course, is, is not enough official action. And on the other hand, there were 70 plus thousand delegates and members at Dubai for this particular COP. Many are launching public private coalitions to transform agriculture and food systems. So there's more regenerative agriculture and take significant carbon emissions out of the sky. In the case of the Rockefeller Foundation, we launched a major effort as part of the Global Energy Alliance to help 81 countries that have three and a half billion people that live in uh, effectively in energy poverty and en energy constrained environments can gain access to renewables, which will reduce carbon emissions against the baseline in a significant way. So the dynamism we see in the public private uh, partnership landscape is what gives me hope. And the uh, struggle and incrementalism we see in the official negotiations, I think we have to break through that with some bolder politics. No, absolutely. Michael Mann, as your book says, we're in a fragile moment. And uh, just listen to John Kerry, uh, the U.S. envoy, of course, speaking at the sum about what he called a central goal. Let's watch. We need to emphatically accelerate the pace of emission reductions. That is the only way to keep 1.5 degrees alive. And our choices need to be based on basic mathematics and physics and the evidence that we understand and the best judgment of the best scientists in the world. So, Michael, can we do this in time without China doing more, India, some of the other big emitters? Yeah, thanks. It's a great question. Uh, the numbers just came in uh, about uh, three days ago for the 2023 carbon emissions. We now have a pretty good handle on what they will be. And it's sort of bad news. They're, they ticked up 1.4 percent. Um, it's a pretty uh, healthy increase. We're going in the wrong direction. We're going in the wrong direction. But when you dig into the numbers, all of the world except for two countries was basically flat in their emissions. And that increase was driven by China and India. And that's where what Raj is talking about becomes so important, because if we are going to convince the Indias of the world that they need to phase out their fossil fuel emissions, then we have to take leadership here in the United States, because we are the world's largest legacy emitter. We've put more carbon pollution into the atmosphere than any other country. But Raj, China now is is building more coal plants, coal burning plants. I was in one, you know, decades ago to show this very fact of open furnace coal burning plants in the heart of Beijing. Absolutely. In fact, in the last decade, uh, not even including in China, Chinese institutions have helped co-finance and subsidize the financing of more than 100 gigawatts of new coal to come online in countries like Vietnam, Indonesia, India across across the globe in emerging and developing economies. And Michael's point about U.S. leadership is critical. I wrote the book Big Bets because I learned as U.S. aid administrator that when America leads the fight against AIDS, the fight against Ebola, the effort to prevent a food crisis after the 2008 financial crisis, others will follow. When America follows, no one's out there leading. And so we need to do more as a, as a nation. We need to mission. We need to invest more in 81 countries that will account for future emissions. And these cops have to be held accountable so that we're asking ourselves, are they producing the, the hundreds of billions 
trillions of dollars of financing required to achieve that success. There's been a time for bold leadership in the past, and I always remain optimistic there'll be a time for bold leadership in the future. Oh, I love your optimism.